Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Art and Perspective. On today's episode, I have with me a very special guest. He is a man that's well known for not only geometric art, but um, but all all art trades in in, um, in general, from carving to um, to calligraphy, etc. The man I'm talking about today is Mr. Adam Williamson. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for giving me such a uh, astounding intro. If I can live up. Uh, you, you deserve it. You deserve it. Um, when I before I was before I got ready for this interview, I was reading through your bio and um, different works that you've done. And um, man, I, I I thought I knew you, but man, you're very you're you're very you have a very good resume. Let's put it that way. <laughs> let's put it that way. Thanks. Um, so before we go into art itself, um, let's let's um, get a little background about you. Um, you were born and raised in London, or where were you born? Yeah, uh, I was born in London, and uh, but raised down mostly on the coast um, of the UK, so okay. near Brighton. Um, my father's a carpenter, so yeah, that I spent much of my time with him working okay. down there. Wow! Wow! But, yeah, so, London, uh, so the um, so that must have had a big impact on you because you do a lot of of, of wood carving, right? Yeah, it sure did. Yeah, um, I had to do a lot of woodwork when I was a kid, whether I liked it or not. Um, okay. He, uh, <laughs> but it was a good training. It was a good training. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we he had his 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 shop, his workshop um, at home, and um, so yeah, I get home, get roped into some some work, some carving, some carpentry, and it put me in good position, you know. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I think um, it, it paid off. Daddy's training paid off, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, did you were you were you always wanting to be a, an artist, or was this something that um, something later on in life led you to? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, um, I wasn't very academic okay. uh, at school, and um, yeah, struggled with those areas. I was more like in my body. I was more in the creative fields, like music and um, okay. sort of different forms of expression. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was quite dyslexic. So all of those areas were really challenging for me um, okay. and seemed very kind of unnatural. Uh, so I thought about it in a sort of practical way. Um, you know, was like, could I get into music? Because um, I, I was, you know, that was a sort of my main focus. But then I realized that, yeah, it's, it's going to be a real tough, tough ride. Okay. <laughs> music. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I was looking for the creative arts and arts that had a function. So I, th okay. you know, I was thinking about it that way. Rather than the fine arts, I was interested more in like practical skills. So I wanted to like skill up. And okay. um, so I went through various trades, like, um, I worked as a sign writer for a while and then, and each one would, would lead to another. So I'd study sign writing and I'd paint shop signs and then I'd realize I didn't understand the, the letter forms. So I'd learn, go and learn calligraphy. And then from calligraphy, I'd start getting into like wanting to carve the letters. And so I'd find masters to study with and it would okay. kind of, things organically grew, um, okay. like just adding these elements, you know? Um, okay. Okay. So where, I think, I think Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go for it. No, 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 I'm, uh, no. I was, I was gonna add. To, maybe you're gonna, you're gonna answer my question. But what I was gonna ask was, so then you were, you were dyslexic, and you know that you couldn't do certain things, and this, this was something the physical, something physical and um, functional was what you wanted to do. Did you end up going yeah. to college, studying something, or were, did you just go into trade school? Oh, how? Uh, yeah, yeah. Things? Okay, so, so, it, um. In the UK, yeah, we don't, unfortunately, a lot of the more skilled craft areas, the schools that teach that, they're, they're sort of more, they're becoming more and more redundant and um, closing. And I did find a couple of schools I could do part-time courses um, in like gilding and various arts uh, okay. and, and sign work. And, but most of what I learned was from masters because I wasn't really fussed about getting qualifications. I just okay. wanted the skills, right? I wanted okay. the disciplines. So I travel, find people in Wales and Spain and Malaysia and Turkey and um, uh, you know in the UK too. And just just uh, just sit at the feet of masters, you know, soak it up. And um, okay. sometimes it would be like small little times in Morocco when I just have interactions. But um, yeah, I had a keen eye and I was just um, 
yeah, looking for, for, for that information. And um, I mean, just in case we move on from the whole dyslexic area, which um, was hopefully sort of, if any young people are watching this um, and it could be of some kind of inspiration, uh, you know, like now, you know, um, later in my career, I'm writing books, I'm sort of putting out like, um, you know, like I'm, I'm a sessional lecturer at the Bur Bur Burbank College, you know, yeah. things I wouldn't imagine when I was at school. Yeah. Um, so I would say like, you know, all those things are achievable if you focus on your passion, on your area, you know, and then you can kind of step from your profession into, in, into those, um, yeah. especially if you collaborate and you've got a good spell check. <laughs> 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 yes, true. True. Actually, you're not the you're not the first artist I'm speaking to that mentioned dyslexia. Um, so um, so that you mentioned that um, that they can eventually do what they what they want to do. I think um, is very important um, because you're yeah. definitely proof of that. And other artists that I've spoken to are as well are proof of that as well. Um, yeah. So you you learned all these. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it also helps with, um, you know, certain elements of the crafts, like it helps with symmetry, you know, because as a dyslexic, you know, things that were a real hindrance to me when I was younger, um, now I see as a as potential, you know, because mm. it's like you'd see everything uh, in reflection, you'd, you'd have this whole symmetrical approach, and the way that you put pieces together was different from the way other people saw the world, you know, in a more constructive way, and as a creative, that's really useful, so um I would say to anyone struggling with those issues at school, like it's it, it can be a real compliment because you've got a different way of looking at the world. And, true. Um, yeah. True, 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 definitely. Um, so after learning all these trades and what have you, you eventually end up though at the um, Princess School of Arts. Yes. Yes. So the wonderful Princess School of Traditional Arts, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, so that's an MA program, and uh, it was started by Keith Critchlow. It's the the princess, the Prince Charles. Um, he's the patron. Yes. Um, and yeah, it used to be quite a small affair when when I found found the place. Um, I was only like nineteen, so I was too young to do the MA. Uh, but I brought in all this work, right, to the interview. I just went to the interview anyway. I was a bit of a, a, bit, a bit of a chancer, and I just yeah. went there and like brought all this work and just put it all on the table. And I was like, this is what I do. And um, just tried my luck. Yeah. <laughs> and they, uh, and Keith was super cool. He said he was, um, you know, he, he said, you're, you're too young, but come and do, be an artist in residence. It was a sort of diploma, artist residency. Okay. So there for about four years. Hmm. Um, and in that time, I'd, I'd duck into some of the classes and then I'd help out uh, the, the students with carving and elements that I was working on. And it was a really, for me, the best thing about that school was how it drew all of these disparate elements together so okay. you'd have um, you know craft you'd have um uh, sort of spiritual practice um and all the spiritual practices that in, in fact you know not just um you know uh sufic or islamic things like that there was also bringing in you know just showing how the difference between sort of profane art and sacred art okay. and the connection the process of learning a tradition um and uh, it would all come under this um umbrella of geometry you know and sacred yeah. geometry and um so uh, professor keith critchlow is he really enlightened me in that sense because i had all these disparate uh, interests and directions and he sort of just harness them all and it sudden it kind of made it clear what my purpose was so that's what I really learned from that time there and and um, the whole ethos and their approach uh, was very against the current at that time mm. yeah I can but imagine. now it's now it's now it's like it's super popular like everyone's especially in the lockdown people are really seeing the benefit in the process of making art and mm. uh, and, the, and slowing down and um, and the need for like skills and and the uh, the elevation that you receive from working with geometry. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. I think um, somebody was mentioning this. It was mentioning this to me last night about about the fact that the, the epidemic has forced us to reconsider whether we need to move around so much and we need to live a fast-paced life like we normally do, etc. Right? It was an yeah. opportunity for us to reconsider those things. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what's going on here in the UK too. We're in the circles I'm in. People are, are, are feeling like you know, let's not fight it anymore. Then just take this opportunity to really like hone our skills. Yeah. To like work on our body, our mind, our spirit, um, and 
you know, like in fact, some people were saying that last year was one of their most productive years. <laughs> true, <laughs> because true. it's just running around, like you, 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 you're moving around a lot, but how much you're actually producing and you know, yes. where, how, how are you actually going? So, in fact, people might be looking back, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, 2020 is a write off. I'm like, really? No way. <laughs> I mean, you know, like aside from the difficulties people had, but in our own personal, you know, as long as we're, you know, in our personal journey, you know, if we made it, then uh, yeah, there's some benefits. Yeah. yeah, true, true, true. Right, and every situation has its pros and its cons, and one, you know, how one approaches it, um, I think does yeah, yeah. does um, affect how you benefit from that or don't benefit, if you will. Right. Yeah. Um. So. Um. So. Um. You, you, you mentioned earlier that you traveled to many different places in Spain and what have Southern, um, Southern England or what have you to um, work on, uh, to learn from other, um, from other um, artisans and what have you. I saw on you that you also um, participated in a PSTA, a PSTA project, um, mm. right? Mm. And um, in Jamaica, which was helping, I think it was helping um, some artisans start up a business. Yeah, yeah as well mm. as some other things that you did in Malaysia and Indonesia and what have you. Um, mm. Why do you still participate in those things till now? What, 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 what do you think the benefit is? Or what is the benefit for you? Okay, well, for me, I mean, like, I like to travel. I, I, I'm always learning. So some okay. of these projects that I'm undertaking for the, for the school, uh, for the Princess School, um, were an opportunity for me to go and learn as well from these okay. craftsmen. Um, so, you know, for example, in, in Jamaica, in, in Canada, working on the reservations with the First Nations people, like apart from it being a dream come true to come to go to those places and have ha access. Mm -hmm. um, I was teaching, but, you know, like I was really there, like with my students cap on, you know, like, like listening to the elders, um, watching how the people carve, how, yeah. how they work, like swapping tools and, and information and so it was a real like even though I was there like running projects like it was a definite exchange and some of these projects like I say they were dreams like I used to dream about um, these particular tribe in, in, in Canada in the North Pacific Northwest when I was a teenager and I had like maps and diagrams on my on my ceiling okay. and I didn't, I didn't really know why and then like when I was just someone asked me one day I like I, you're probably not interested but this is project it's like whoa, <laughs> destiny. Destiny's like that sometimes, right? It just yes. happens like that. Yes. Just <laughs> so, um, um, uh, and then on the other side, apart from all that, like I really owe a lot to the school. So I'm happy to to, to help them in any way. And 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 it, and it's these things are these traditions are so important, um, and some of them are almost about to go. So like anything that is promoting those that traditional learning and, and that when, when I say tradition, I don't mean like something that it's just in the past. I mean, something that is a, a kind of discipline, a respect, like an adapt that you, that you, you, you have for, um, for art and, yeah. and for life. And then that, that's something that's continued and, and, and grows at all times. But um, uh, yeah, so I'm happy to promote anything like that. And then also we have a lot of projects that I do with outside the school too. Okay. You know? Um, with my colleague Richard, we, we take a lot of people on these study trips to Morocco and Turkey and Iran, and uh, that's like a whole other bag. Yeah, yeah, um, yes, um, I've I've seen that um, your Islamic arts of Islamic part uh, pattern um, yeah. website and what have you. Um, I, you guys are very popular, um, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. How how how's how's it been teaching um, during the pandemic? I'd imagine that you'd have a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Oh man, it was. Um, it's been a trip. We thought, you know, we always said we wouldn't do the online classes. We wanted. We, so we would travel, right? We would go to New York, go to Sydney, yeah. take the take the show on the road, or take people to you know uh, Esfahan or Istanbul, yeah. you know, Fez and Marrakesh, and see the the you know work underneath the the real art. But like. And I just do it, didn't think it could be done. And so I did a couple of classes right at the beginning of when lockdown happened as a, just yeah. to sort of free, like, oh, like, come on, you know, we're all in this, let's just get together and do some drawing, you know? Yeah. And then um, and it went crazy. There was like a lot of people joining up. Um, wow. And uh, then I realized, wow, this has got a lot of potential because you can 
take a camera, right? You can get real close to the work um, yeah. and hundreds of people, like 600 people can watch this thing at the same time and all yeah. learn. And it's a really good use of, um, of your effort and time. And so it, it ended up being a whole, like the whole, a lot of the year I spent um, just sharing all of this research, like a lifetime's research in one oh, year. Wow. And uh, what was nice is that it, um, it sort of consolidated that and it's for me it's nice because I kind of put all that work and it's done and then like now I can move on do new work and and it's all there like online and people can yeah. go and access it because you know some of these patterns that I taught or classes I taught maybe 20 times you know in person around the world and then just so they were really honed and it's just yeah. and they were, they were just ripe and ready to, to kind of for a big audience and so it worked out really well yeah yeah, yeah. true <laughs> yeah true. That's nice. Um, you you experience any challenges with this, with having to use technology? I mean, yes, you can oh, zoom man. in closer, but are there any challenges <laughs> that you face? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know about you, but it feels so natural now. But when I started, it was so strange. It was like breathing water. I mean, I, I didn't know what <laughs> I was doing. I was freaking out, you know, just... I'm used to having groups of, you know, maximum like 40 people like teaching them. And when I saw these numbers and and just trying to use the technology and just keep, I kept getting worried that it was going to break down in the middle of the yeah. class. And what do we do if that happens? And, and like everything you can imagine would happen because you're really nervous. And then like you would guarantee like five minutes before the class, the Wi-Fi would, would go or something. And you know, <laughs> so we had all kinds of ex exciting things. And, and at the time I thought it was the end of the world. Like we had one time when we were trying to teach a class and, uh, my neighbor in my old studio is just drilling like do die grinding for hours like <laughs> so bad I could I, we, and me and my my assistant we were crying we were crying and laughing and we got the giggles so bad that we just couldn't we were laughing for about, <laughs> for about 10 or 15 minutes and we and I just thought oh this is the end no one's coming back after this it's like all over the shop and then yeah. uh but then they, they, they were like legendary they were legendary classes <laughs> people were like everyone was just laughing you know we're all in it together so yeah um yeah, so there are a lot of challenges, but I think people are, are you know, you, after a while you realize people are patient and, um, you know, that. so it's, uh, it will work out in the end. And is that your assistant yeah. behind you? Oh, uh, yeah, this, this is Ling, yeah. Although, well, there was hi, a hi yeah. Mr. Assistant, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, Ling, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I am the background person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, Ling, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, right. Yeah, so uh, you, you, you I, I imagine that um, doing all these um, online courses um, has allowed you to expand into, into territories or countries, if you will, where people wouldn't normally be able to access you exactly. as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that, was, that was really beautiful, you know, and the fact that we have large numbers means that, like, you know, it's a third of the group can just do it for free. And who couldn't okay. afford it, you know, uh, from wow. maybe developing countries. And uh, so it's it's a bit like that. What, you know, whatever people can afford or if they can't afford anything, they just join. And it's nice because the richer countries sort of subsidizing the poorer wow, ones. And that's nice. And this community is growing and it's it's really sweet. It was really nice. And and people are still going back and doing the online stuff. And yeah, like, like you say, people are, you know, up at at the end you turn on the videos you know, and yeah. someone's up a mountain like in a in, in in like montana in a in the snow and then someone else is you know in like karachi and someone yeah. else is uh, <laughs> coming in like 3 a.m in australia and it's it's, wow. it's a riot yeah wow, wow wow yeah it shows how popular you know how in demand this this work is this type of art is um, yeah 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 exactly this material yeah it's just re people are ready for it now and wow. it was something so strange when I was studying it. It would people would be like frowning upon it, you know. Now it's now it's like people want to know. Uh, they're sort of, sort of bored of all the like the 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 sardonic um, and the you know. There's only so far that art, you know, fashion and art can go. Like yeah. it's 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 a bit traditional art. It's timeless. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's lasted for a long time. <laughs> so there's, there's, yeah. got be, there's got to be something behind it. And speaking of something behind it, let's let's. I want to talk something. I, I want to talk about the fact that you know. Um, I mean, yes, um, in a sense, you can call it Islamic art, but in a way, this is really traditional, and you find it in, in other in other spiritual um, domains, if you will. But why why is it why is it that 
or why do you think it is that um, a lot of people are attracted to this as opposed to many other forms of art? You know, there, there are different forms of art and what have you, but it seems like there's something a little more, more attractive to, to this type of art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it's, it's, it's a universal archetypal form. Like this, it, this, these are like concepts that are, you know, the universe is built on, you know, like you, mm-hmm. the framework for the way nature grows. Um, the way the atmosphere moves, you know, the way the body and tissue grows, like the the proportions of our body, um, you know, the cycles of our life, um, as well as like the basis for many religions and sacred practices, you know, they're all interlinked. And this is like an, ex- this is an expression of that, a pure, simple expression, you know, the circle just divides into six. Why is that? You know, why are we attracted to it? And all of that symmetry um, is sort of undeniable. And it's the framework for, for a lot of things that we don't even realize we're attracted to. Um, so uh, we can unpick it, but when you go to places like Morocco and uh, or like Indonesia and you speak to the craftsmen, they just, they're just like, that's beautiful. That's not, you know, they just get it. Like they, they don't have to like theorize or anything, but they know that the, yeah. this, this has like, this is grown and this aesthetic um, which is shared between those countries, you know, like yeah. even though they're not connected, you know, they have the same approach. Um, these these concepts, like they're expressing the divine. So you can't argue with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah, no. else I was saying, yeah, fashion, it's like, it's in and out. It's in and sure. out. You're like, oh, you're doing some like, um, you know, people are like, it, it, it's, it's all reaction. So they're reacting against what came before. Let's throw out the old and bring in the new and let's like revolt against that. But like, you know, so what? Like you've, 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 uh, you've torn up what came before you and, but that's not gonna like standard. It's, it's not, it's not like, um, uh, there's no growth there. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. So I think people now are like, especially like when times get rough like, like this, it's like, what do I enjoy? What is like fulfilling me? Not what yeah. should I enjoy or what is hip to be into? Sure. People are really questioning like, what am I, who am I? What am I about? And yeah, sure. 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 good times. Yeah, 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 it is, it is, it is. Uh, I think, um, I think what, the, the most difficult times are the times that when you actually discover yourself, right? When everything yeah. is cool and relaxed, you don't get to push yourself, your boundaries. You don't get to do anything, no. but once you once you're forced to, then you realize your limits, or you realize that you, your your limits are as are a lot um a lot wider than you think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your potential, yeah. Yeah, your potential. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, True. Man, yeah. So it, yeah, there's like these. Um, yeah, I guess within these limitations, we're seeing our potential. Um, yeah. Uh, it's so it's funny how the whole thing's so upside down, you know, like true. how so many people have traveled so much without going anywhere. True, 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 true. Yeah, thank God for the internet. I think the internet has helped, <laughs> has helped somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to cope with this, right? Um, this whole thing. Yeah. But let's 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 go back to art. Let's talk about your art in particular. Now, I've I've seen a lot of what you've done. Um, you've done some things for the for. Um, for many people in different forms in art and in marble and wood and all this kind of things. But the thing that stood out the most for me was um, the gravestone of Martin Links. Tell us how you got okay. that project and how, um, why did you develop it the way you did? Uh, well, so Martin Links, for some context, is he's, uh, he's a Sufi sheikh um, and he, he, he was the... Um, uh, the creator of Islamic manuscripts at the British Library yeah. for many years, um, and the author of lots of fantastic books. Uh, yeah. And so, at that time, for about seven years, I was mostly working as a stone carver. Okay. Um, so now I do a lot of the biomorphic art patterns, you know, um, more like fine art. Uh, so that time, yeah, and you know, the sort of circles are small, and like I was the Sufi stone carver, I guess, and they were like, "This it just makes sense to get that guy." But I was quite young at the time, okay. Um, and the whole process was 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 a really was really profound for me, like the whole journey making it, okay. um, and a real honor. And so the 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 carving itself was based on um, the covers that he uses on his books, and yeah. like particular 
they had a lot of Kufic geometry and yeah, it's a very profound process. Honored to do it, yeah. <laughs> were you were you were you allowed to choose what you were gonna put on the stone, or was this something that was already set out for you? No, like the design was made by by someone in Malaysia, I think. Okay. Um and uh yeah, I went through lots of iterations and and then you know, I had some say in what was possible with the stone. Yeah, and then okay. And I was, yeah, it's down to me to carve it and install it. Mm. Okay. Who commissioned the, um, the headstone, the gravestone? It's called uh, Reza Shah. Reza Shah. Is, uh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. um, so um, something that, um, that, I mean, you've mentioned it before with the, the fact that you've studied different um, forms of art and one kind of led to, to the other, but how do, how does, how do, how do you keep your hands in so many, so many places and still be able to function <laughs> very well, <laughs> you know, oh, I, 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 I'm very, I'm very intrigued by that. I want you to give us some of your, <laughs> what kind of works, what kind of goes through your, your mind doing all um, these things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, so I, yeah, I just, um, yeah, I got a paintbrush in my toe and a chisel in my hand and a, <laughs> Yeah, like a pencil and the other. Well, I, the thing is that it, these are more periods of my life. Okay. So, you know, I worked as stone carver for like about seven or eight years. And then I'll, then I'll go back and occasionally do some work in that, you know, and then I moved on, did more wood sculptural work. And yeah. it, it, it's sort of like it developed with my investigation into pattern and, and, and what was the best material to, um, to produce what I was working in. So I, work for a long time just to commission and I'd be working as a stone carver for a long time and then but the thing is that yeah the when when I started doing more and more of these trips and traveling it's it was quite difficult just to get some stone and carve you know it's yeah. really time consuming so I work more in plaster and um and then you know it just like people see you carving plaster it's like getting work carving plaster yeah. it was it's just very organic process you know like this year like oh I had a whole plan a whole thing planned out and then you end up online and you know now I'm yeah. this online guy, but it's just um yeah <laughs> you just gotta like you know i'm i'm fascinated with the all and, it, and it's all connected under geometry and they're just different yeah. expressions of these patterns and the you know they're expressions of like the development of my learning and portfolio of um ideas and theories and then you, you know, then opportunities come too, and you gotta like go with the flow. And what's what's not only just op opportunities, but it's a sort of it's it's like where are we where am I best of service? So like, is it better that I teach, take people, and like share what I'm doing, or you know, make work that's you know, it's like it's 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 a kind of um, you know what feeds the soul really. And if you you know when you get a lot of good feedback when you've shared stuff and you've seen people like uh, change, and you're like, well, yeah if i could change people like to that level with a piece of art then that, then i'll do that but at the moment like i feel yeah my calling is there so that's where i'm at, at the moment so now in this phase in your life now you're focusing a lot more on two-dimensional drawings and the patterns well the biomorph. yeah kind of well yeah it's funny you should say that i am actually doing working a lot on a whole series of um these uh like a fractal toroidal um uh, patterns, you know, a bit like this painting on the wall here. This is just like a mock-up for these plaster carvings that I'm making. Okay. Um, but that's sort of background to the classes. And yeah, at the moment, it's a lot of the classes and I'm writing a couple of books. Okay. Um, so I'm doing research, sketching, drawing, and um, and I keep sort of thinking I end the classes and then they're real popular. So I just um, uh, run a few more and I get really into them because they are they give me a focus for my research as well, yeah. you know, like so <clears throat> yeah so that's what's that's what's happening at the moment and and i keep thinking yeah like right we thought we we're going to open up and so i was getting ready for that <laughs> <laughs> and i go back indoors and shut the curtains again yeah, so. <laughs> you find do you find that um with teaching because I, I i i teach english as a matter of fact in school right mm -hmm. do you find with teaching that you actually learn more than actually when you were a student yourself yourself Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way. And I think with the teaching, not yeah. You re when you, you know, when you're researching, and you have that purpose. You really got to yeah. like retain the information, and uh, and you really got to be selective and in how things go. And 
yeah, with the classes, it's really, you know, you start to understand what kind of questions people are going to want to ask you, like you have this bit of information, then like, well, where's, what's the root of that? And what's the, you know, you're going to, you got to go deep. Um, and uh, so the classes often change, you know, sometimes I put a, I put a class out and then by the time the class comes around, uh, I have, um, I've adapted it, you know, because it's like I, before we got to that question, I really had to answer this this larger question of, you know, yeah. for example, where did these motifs come from? Like where, so we're using them, but they're like, you know, in the last class we did, we were, we were looking at um, work from Southeast Asia, particular patterns, but then, you know, to get to that point, we really needed to look at like the bigger picture and these particular motifs like the lotus, the acanthus and things that were like circulating around the world at that time and the trade routes and, yeah. So I end up emerging out. <laughs> yeah. So, but my, the community is pretty patient and they're, 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 they're cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would imagine with, with these drawings, you have to be patient. You can't be, you can't be in a rush at all. No, no. It's a meditation and it's an easy meditation. If you find meditating difficult, this is, this is definitely easier than meditating. <laughs> <laughs> step one yeah do some geometry right and then meditate <laughs> yeah, yeah before you know it you're like where was i for two hours and, yeah yeah and you're like floating around levitating <laughs> <laughs> yeah finding yourself right now uh, yes yes um so uh, um now as a as a layman looking in you're looking into all these um, geometric patterns and what have you. And most of what you're doing with them, um, with your students, I would imagine, are the traditional drawings, the, the carvings that you might see at, a, at, a, at an old mm -hmm. uh, mosque or church or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So that's right. If, yeah. if, if, if that's the case, then a layman might say, well, why, why go through all this trouble of, you know, of traveling there and, you know, looking at the pattern and then maybe trying to decipher how do they draw those patterns? Why not just and trace, you know, and, you know, why, why go through all this labor? What's, what's the purpose? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well, it, it's a good question. Um, well, it's the process, you know, it's like, why, why not just w watch a game of football? Why, why, you know, instead of playing it, I mean, it's, it's, it's the enjoyment of the making it. Um, and I think these, these, some of the traditional patterns that we're looking at, they are really pivotal in their development, right? They're using, um, they're like a mystery, you know, yeah. so you, the more you look at them, the more levels you have. And if you just trace a pattern, you, you, you don't understand the depth of it. Right? Yeah. You just see it like a, like a snapshot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's like, for example, you know, if you went to, uh, anyway but if you were in a palace for example you're looking at a facade if you sat there all day and drew it you would start to see the multitude of different patterns there how they relate to each other how the facade connects you know you there's so much going on you know if you just wander around and take a few iphone pictures or just like a you know the, i mean people have spent like 10 years carving and you know sure. like working on 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 the on the inherent um symbolism behind these things so i think drawing them in that sense, you you're there like um, uh, absorbing that that wisdom and that ancient knowledge, um, and then at the same time, you're also spending this meditative period um, working with something that's inherently beautiful. So, like we we're saying, it's a it's a meditation, and it, it's just if we're gonna sit there and meditate on something, you might as well meditate on something with like profound value and elevation and something that's been made like selflessly to uh to kind of celebrate the divine you know um sure these guys were like working with old you know neoplatonic ideals that, that have been around for thousands of years yeah. um so if you can get that kind of download yeah you're not going to get it from tracing or taking a photo <laughs> <laughs> yes you gotta yes. put in the time yes yes true true you have to go through the labor yes yes um so are you um if if i was if i was a beginning artist now and i came to you for advice what would be one piece of advice you'd give me um my advice would be to do <laughs> to make you know to make because it's just like in the making you get the, the the download you get the education 
So uh, in the in the momentum, you get the motivation, and then you get the seed, and then it grows, right? Yeah. Uh, so all of my work and understanding came from making you know so as soon as i would start making i would like i don't know for example like you know when you're cleaning the house and you, yeah. you're, you're doing one operation and then like you're in the mix right you, you're going once you yeah. once you finally get going you, you're doing one thing and you're looking at the next thing you're going to do right and as you're in the motion yeah. it's like that and, you, and that's like i could say that's in my life like it's just been like i don't know why i'm you know especially at the beginning it's like i don't know why i'm doing this because a lot of the work was like ephemeral and, I, and it wouldn't you know, I don't know, even like with painting on the wall, like this is going to get painted over. But it's the it's sometimes like when you get stuck, you just I just got to make I just make anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then and then something's going to come from that. In that process, my mind changes and I can focus. You know, like a, mm. you don't get, to get rid of any block blockages. If you I can't just sit and think, what am I going to do or where am I? You know, I have to. It's in the making. Yeah. Um, so and then I also I'd be like. You know, and that's how you get a skill because the problem with arts the last, you know, 20, 30 years is that um, the, all the skills have been thrown out the window. So mm -hmm. like, why is art any different from music? You know, you need to learn your skill. You need to learn how to carve. Yeah. And you'd be like, I can carve. Now, what concept do I want to make? Like, what composition do I want to make with my carving? You know, like I've learned how to carve. I've learned, I can play the guitar. Now, what tune do I want to play? It's just yeah. the same. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got to learn your skill you know, and, uh, you know, make something, make something that's going to speak to people, like, you can do it, and then you can bring in the, the like, the wit and the intellect, yeah. and, yeah. Wow, that's stuff, yeah, yeah, and, you know, you have, you have a lot of people that, um, they want to start, they, but, mm. but they feel, they feel, um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for, they feel like, um, like um they have maybe responsibilities or they feel they they don't have that um that that push um to allow them just dive into it uh because of yeah. whatever other things are you know whatever things in their yeah, lives yeah. are um holding yeah, yeah. back if you will right so okay. uh, there's no other way though they just have to start you just got to get started and um and 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 then you also go through times as well you know like i mean we like you know myself with this this the, the pandemic or times in my life difficult times and you got to re you got to start again like it's not you know for me it's not like once i'm there i'm there it's like it's ongoing yeah. <laughs> you right you, <laughs> yeah. what i've been realizing recent recently especially is that that little spark that makes you want to do it that pushes you on that's yeah. you've got to guard that super precious you know it's like mm. carry it like a candle because um if that goes then it doesn't matter how like doesn't matter how strong you are or all your abilities if you don't have that little seed of like hope and uh then and and mo that, that motivates you then you're and yeah so that thing needs to be protected yeah. and from there like from that desire it's just like you just got to get started so i i would say at the beginning just just like do anything you know <laughs> like do anything just, just get moving get get in the flow yeah because they're really time consuming things and you as you're working like you start to get a sense of like, oh, I, I like certain elements and, and then it will, it will, you'll grow from there. Yeah. Yeah. True. 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 Yeah. Um, so not be so I, precious in the beginning, not be like, oh, I have to make something that everyone appreciates, just make it for yourself. And like, you know, I used to do like insanely complicated work when I was younger, like uh, that no one would ever see or buy or understand the, the sheer like man hours that I put into it, you know, and everyone else would be partying, but yeah. You know, like, what do you got to say for uh, partying for 10 years? What do you got to say at the end of it? Like, oh, I partied for 10 years. So, you know. <laughs> true. <laughs> true, 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 right? Um, so, you, so you should have, you need that, you need that drive within you to just, you know, just start, right? At least enough of it to just start and say, you know what, then let that build into something else, right? Don't, don't just don't wait for anything else just start and start doing that right yeah yeah that's what i'd say yeah you got it yeah yeah like just start pick up the guitar and start making sounds eventually in 10 years it's gonna sound super good <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 10 months rather 10 months <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah hopefully not 10 years all right um <laughs> yeah so um 
Um, obviously, I know that um, with, the, with the whole pandemic, there are no exhibitions um, or there might be virtual exhibitions or what have you, but are, they, are there any projects um, that you want to let us know about or you can let us know about in the um, forthcoming future? Um, well, yeah, I just, at the moment, I'm, I've got these classes. So, I, I just, you know, like if you want to come and join me, um, it's, 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 it's a great community, a lot of nice people there like um have connected thanks to the classes you know now good friends um and you know as soon as the class goes up everyone's painting it everyone like that's that's a, it's a nice motivation because because we're all working on the same pattern you yeah. know for the week or two after that class everyone's painting the same pattern everyone's rendering it and like we're, everyone's encouraging each other so that community has really helped mm. motivate people to to get stuff out there and they're, they're becoming they're growing into artists themselves, you know? Um, so yeah, come and join me. That's what I'm doing at the moment, mostly. And then I'm working on these um, these carvings, which I won't show virtually, right? They'll just be for when when we're allowed out. And yeah. then, um, yeah, then they'll come, then, I'll, then they'll come onto the scene, yeah. And the books, <laughs> um, when are the books um, due to be published? Well, that's a good question. I mean, one of the books is it should be like we're working on it now, and hopefully it will go to print in a, in a month or so. And okay. that is um, that's a, a, available to pre-order. Okay. There's already like three or four hundred people pre-ordered that. So, right. like, if you want to do that, that means you'll get first um, you'll get it sent out, and it's on good your because website? it's sort of, it's on the website, and it and it and it's um it helps us, you know, it helps our little troop continue what we're doing so yeah it's all supportive of that it's okay yes uh, so definitely support the the movement um thank you mr adam <laughs> williamson for this interview i've um i have deeply appreciate it um and um we definitely need to chat some other time in the future definitely after the pandemic thank you so much yeah well i'm often in dubai so like i look forward to, yeah next time i'm there with these oh, yes. projects and oh yes yes i mean yeah Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you very much.